with us now is Dr. Peter McGaw, who's an exploration geologist based here in Tucson, but is exhibits chair for the Tucson Gem and Mineral Show. And Peter, this is the third time you've come back to the show, so I think you, you yeah, set the record. Is, this is your second anniversary, or at least it's the second anniversary of my being. Third an second anniversary, third time. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Well, great. Well, welcome back. Mm -hmm. And we want to talk to you about the 2015 Tucson Gem and Mineral Show. First thing, what's the theme this year? The theme is minerals of Western Europe, which we're defining because we did Russia 12 years ago. We're defining Western Europe as everything west of Russia. Okay. All the way <laughs> to the eastern edge of the European plate. So half of Iceland counts, the other half of Iceland doesn't. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and we go essentially from the Mediterranean to North Cape in Norway. Wow. Okay. So why, why Western Europe? Why, why that area? Western Europe is, first of all, it's the birthplace of mineralogy. I mean, between Germany and Hungary, you're talking about where the science of mineralogy evolved. Uh, throw in the Great, Great Britain, and you're taking mineralogy to the next step in terms of what we think of as modern mineralogy. Uh, wonderful old mines that have produced the type specimens of probably a third of all the mineral species that have ever been defined. And a lot of sort of agitation on the part of Europeans to feature either their particular country or a bunch of countries. And it was, it, 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 it's hard to carve out one or two in particular to, mm -hmm. to focus on. So we decided we'd, we'd cover everything. Okay. So as exhibits chair, what should we be looking for? What, what do you see? Well, we have more than 50 exhibits of minerals from Western Europe. Okay. Now, that's not just, there's... 14 different countries who have either private collectors or national museums represented. Okay. But then we have the Smithsonian, of course, the Royal, uh, the Canadian National Museum, which acquired a spectacular uh, collection of classic European minerals from a man named Bill Pinch um, about 15 years ago. Okay. And so they're bringing an exhibit of some of the best of his materials. So. There's going to be a lot of really spectacular, some cases the Carnegie is bringing some very historic specimens. We have an exhibitor from Germany who's bringing the oldest documented mineral specimens that are known from Europe, and those go back to the 1400s. Wow. Um, okay. On top of that, we have more than 20 different exhibitors. It's not really a competition, but it's called the Great Quartz Face-Off. And so these are, these are folks who are fanatics about collecting quartz and all of its different shapes and colors, smoky quartz, amethyst, rose quartz, citrine, you name it. Uh, and there's going to be 20 cases of that, including a find that was made within the last two months in Arkansas of these spectacularly clear, uh, just absolutely limpid quartz crystals. I mean, some of them are literally this long and this big around. Uh, but the best ones are sort of in this size range and beautiful faces, just gorgeous, sharp. You read a newspaper through them. They're some of the finest quartz is ever found anywhere. And this is a, and this is a brand new find. We, we, they just publicly announced day before yesterday that these things had been found. That's incredible. So they're debuting at the Tucson. Oh, my God. Okay. So it's exciting with, with it being uh, pretty much all of Europe. It's not just a single mineral like we do many years we're going to see an incredible range of minerals. Oh yeah, you'll see spectacular fluorites from Spain. You'll see wonderful old native silvers and sulfa salts from Germany. You'll see pyromorphites from France. You'll see all kinds of quartz from all over the Alps, including these things called gwindels, which are these complex curved twisting groups. They make individual crystals up to about like this, but because of the way they stack and grow, you wind up with this weird curved shape to them. And some of those are smoky and associated with big green um, agillaria. Um, we've got golden calcites from northern Sweden, the sulfurs from Sicily, a whole collection of Greek minerals coming from a private collection there. Uh, just, it's everything this, this, from soup to nuts. Yeah, this this is amazing. Okay. And the other thing is that uh, I was taking a look at the, the lectures, and that's something I don't think we've talked about much in the past, but um, over the four days of the formal show here, there's an incredible list of lectures that are open to the public, and none of these uh, cost anything, right? These are all free? Uh, the le the, once you've paid admission to the right. Tucson Gem and Mineral Show at the convention right. center, right. 
then yes, every activity yes. within the show is covered by that fee. Right, so, and so every day there's a list of uh, three to six or more uh, uh, different uh, lectures. Um, I see Jeff Scoble on, on mineral photography, uh, Les Presnick on the Red Cloud, Wolfenite locality. And I think you're giving a talk here I saw on... Uh, on how Mexican silver financed the Spanish Empire. Yes, yeah. Yes. That sounds fascinating. I'm really looking forward to that one. Yeah, so there's a very strong um, series of talks that play to the theme of Western Europe, but also the interaction between Western Europe and the Western Hemisphere. Right. So that, that sounds fascinating. Um, you've also brought a poster here. I have. Can you, can you share I'd with us? I'd be What's delighted to share our there? poster. This oh, is a, yeah. an epidote from um, the Alps in, in Austria. And uh, in keeping with our theme of minerals from Western Europe, we're also demonstrating our solidarity with right. our brethren in, right. in Europe who um, have had their tribulations for the last week right. or two. Yeah, so that's uh, fantastic. And, um, so that will be the poster for the 2015 okay. show. Excellent. That's great. The Je suis Charlie is added. That's not part right. of the Right. It looks poster. like you, you get you, to add yes. it yourself. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. And you brought some minerals here. I did. So... Tell us what, what you've brought. Here. None of these have anything to do with Western okay. Europe. These <laughs> yeah. are just examples of some of the things that will be shown by people who aren't uh, playing to that particular theme. Okay. Um, although this is an amethyst, which is purple quartz, so that would be perfectly acceptable oh. in, the, in the quartz face-off. Right. Uh, we have a botryoidal uh, blue hemimorphite from Mexico, which is just an interesting shape and a lovely color. And that plays a little bit to the theme of our, our theme for 2016 is blue minerals. Really? And <laughs> no, no mineral show anywhere in the world has ever done, it's right. based on color. Yeah. But we started okay. thinking, what can we do that's different yeah. for 2016? And it was like, every mineral group that exists has a blue mineral. And, okay. and so <laughs> this, this, lets you, you know, understand how color can be a defining feature of a mineral and how color often is not a defining feature for minerals. So you have to be very careful. But yes. since lots of people collect, you know, I, I'm personally fascinated by collecting philosophies and what, what, what ties someone's collection together. Right. Whether it's very simple if they like copper minerals or if they like face-centered cubic minerals or right. Or fluoride or calcite or something like that, but you, you know, you get people who collect because they think they all look like little animals, or yes, you get right. people who yes. like a particular color or a shape or whatever. So uh, it just seemed like an interesting theme to try to play to, and, and that makes sense. When you said blue, I thought I've never heard of anyone doing a show that's color based, and this will be mm -hmm. the first time. Right. Okay. Well, and color and minerals is very interesting science, and it's a lot of stuff that's being worked on by people today. So. Okay. Okay. Uh, it's not just um, playing to the cheap seats, if you will. Right. Okay. <laughs> um, also up here yes. we have a ram's horn gypsum from a mine in Mexico, uh, showing that not all, even though it's crystalline, it does not have the sort of standard geometric shapes that one might expect. Mm -hmm. and, and that stems from the fact that it actually crystallizes from the base and extrudes everything that's been crystallized before. And so these things form in pockets that are... 100% humidity and absolutely okay. dead still, and right. so they basically get pushed out and they form these weird snaky shapes uh, on the walls of the mine. Oh. And then this last one is right. brand new material from Mexico. It's it's a form of opal called hyalite, referring to the fa fact that it's glassy looking. Uh, and this this is the unique material in the sense that it is daylight fluorescent. Under incandescent light, it doesn't really have any color at all. You get it out into shaded sunlight especially, and it picks up the UV light from natural sunlight, and it explodes into a chartreuse yeah, color. You, you and then we'll us earlier. we have a little bit of a, yeah. of a 405 nanometer laser here that we can play on it. Uh, and you can see it, it doesn't get quite this violently green or chartreuse under, under daylight, but it gets mm -hmm. pretty close. And this stuff facets beautiful stones that show the oh. same effect. Oh. It's being marketed as electric opal. And if you live, if you don't, if you don't live in a place like Tucson where the sun shines all the time, if you live in Seattle or someplace like that where you've right. got three or four months of rain, 
you, you walk outside from a building and your earrings light up. <laughs> and so uh, it's, it's okay. attracting a lot of attention because so of that you said, How new is this? I mean, I don't think I've... There I've were seen. about 20 pieces of it at the Tucson show last year. Okay. And, and so, so everything, the, all of this is brand new material. Expect to see quite a bit more this year, you think? No, well, there might be as many as four or 500 pieces total. Okay. Okay. Plus about 500 gemstones. Okay. All right. I'm just thinking doing some of my shopping planning here for the show coming up. And uh, so we'll have to talk off screen about where, <laughs> where, where to go okay. <laughs> and find the, okay. find the best pieces on that. Okay. So, all right. So um, anything else that... Uh, I mean, you, you've, you've hit me with so much stuff, it's hard to know where to go with this. There's so much happening at the show. Well, I mean, another thing to emphasize is that the foundation for the Tucson Gem and Mineral Society is to promote appreciation and education in earth science and minerals. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that we do is a very strong outreach program for children uh, to get them involved. And so we have school children visits on Friday morning, uh, which unfortunately this year apparently Cohen conflict with parent-teacher conferences oh. within TUSD, uh, so there'll be a few fewer school kids down there on Friday morning, but we also have our junior education program in concert with the undergraduate geology club at the university, right. and they come down and we have a whole program for children right. to learn about aspects of earth science, learn fundamental mineral, mineral identification, they have a treasure hunt where they go out and they have to look at certain exhibits and, uh, and things like that throughout the hall. Right. Uh, they answer their scavenger hunt or treasure hunt. They bring it back and they're given a specimen as their reward for doing that. So it's a way to get them to look at the exhibits rather than just a bunch of pretty rocks or whatever it is. Right. There's something specific that they're looking for. Right. Uh, and it really engages the kids um, and it's a very, very popular program. And ultimately, it results in field support for the undergraduate geology club so that they can go out and actually knock on some rocks, which is what we know is really where the understanding of geology to go. comes from. Okay. So that's a very strong part of our program. Right. Okay. And as I remember, the, the, the partnership with the University of Arizona is at the back of the hall. There's a whole uh, Correct. kind Correct. of hallway by itself there. Yes. And the students are there with one-on-one -on -one interacting with... Right. with the university students are there one-on-one right. on one with, the, with, with the kids. With the kids and them. their parents who yeah. come along with them. Right. Uh, we're not exactly sure where it's going to be. It may be easy to find this because if you look in the arena, there will be a full Stegosaurus skeleton oh, back okay. there, which will <laughs> tell you where to go. If it's not there, it'll be in the uh, Galleria lobby upstairs. Oh, okay. uh, it's just a question of right. logistics of moving around a Stegosaurus skeleton or um, okay, <laughs> are where's, where's, a, little, a little tricky. Where's that one coming from? Who, who's bringing that in? Um, I just heard about this last night. Okay. I, I, I don't know who, who it's coming in from, but it's from the North Dakota area somewhere. Oh, okay. All right. Well, that should be exciting. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, great. Well, kids love dinosaurs. So, uh, me too. You know, we all, well, <laughs> yeah, but the, the, right. how many geologists do you know who started because they were interested in dinosaurs? That's right. Uh, now we're trying to divert them into minerals, but it's okay if they stay with dinosaurs. Right. Uh, we also have a, a, a new ankylosaur coming from New Mexico. It's a brand new species of ankylosaur that they've just identified, and so there's an exhibit coming with that. So it's not just gems and minerals. We right. have a strong avenue toward fossils as well. Right. Okay. Well, Peter, I'm, I'm excited. I can hardly wait for this thing to, to get launched. So. Thank you again for coming back. Thanks for bringing these, and uh, uh, we're, we're going to be looking forward to this, and we'll make sure that the, uh, the website is uh, up, on the, uh, up on the screen here mm -hmm. so people can go and make sure that they are aware of all of the other activities going on. I think most people come in and go through the hall and not realize how many other uh, lectures and activities and things there's are going on. There's lectures, there's the exhibits, there's also a whole series of public organizations, the Mineralogical Society of America, the Forest Service, the USGS, all of these public service and educational organizations right. that have booths where you can interact with the mineral and geologic sciences, scientists of one kind or another, and, and learn about what it is we do, which is part of why we want to get kids excited about it, because earth science is a wonderful life, and uh, yeah. well, we and need it. And we appreciate the society making space available for our survey. 
to have a booth up on that mezzanine as well. And uh, it's great because everybody who's lining up that first day, there's hundreds of people lining up mm -hmm. for when the doors open, and they're all going right past our booth and discovering mm -hmm. things. And many of them never even knew we had a geologic survey in Arizona. And so it's been a great app <laughs> opportunity for us to share with people some of the things that, that we do. It's a so. tragedy that a state <laughs> that is as much founded on geology and and mining and natural resources as Arizona is struggles with having recognition for its geological survey. Um, and I'll just thank you for those <laughs> comments that, that uh, we're, we're working very closely with, mm -hmm. with the society and with other groups to, to try to make sure with the, with the small operation we have that we can get our message out. So mm -hmm. it's been a great partnership and we appreciate you, appreciate you coming on, on the show every year and talking about what's coming up one of the more popular episodes we, uh, we okay. produce every year. And it, it's a pleasure keeping my string going. So I'm, All right. I'm, I'm, yes. <laughs> I'm the first 30-timer. So That's right, yes. Uh, I want to be the first four-timer, five-timer, six-timer, and so That's on great. and so forth. Because uh, we'll have our show as long as we can think of. Right. It's fantastic. Great. Well, congratulations on the planning so far and what looks like it's just another fantastic show. It should be. Yeah. Great. Tell everyone to come down, convention center. Um, Thursday through Friday, the, the, through the Thursday through Sunday. That's uh, the 11th through the fifth, 12th through the 15th, uh, from 10 o'clock in the morning until 6 o'clock in the evening. Um, parking at the convention center is parking at the convention center. Um, Ten dollar admission fee. Um, look forward to seeing as many. And the new light folks. rail goes right past there. That's right. You can take the trolley. Right. And there's a stop right there by the convention center. So. 